been doing some reading recently about psychology, human psychology. And there's the awakening awareness that as human beings, we aren't just one person. There are many dimensions to who we are. In some way, many selves. The person you are when you're doing the dishes in the morning is not exactly the same person you are when you are, I don't know, going out to the movies or talking to a friend. All part of the same psyche, but how we feel about ourselves, who we experience ourselves to be, is different in different circumstances. If you reflect on your own experience, I think you might find out that that's true. There is the notion that there are parts of ourselves that um, get into trouble, if you will, for various reasons, and get us into trouble. They are undeveloped parts of ourselves, parts of ourselves that have swung into action in unhealthy ways. Any of that going on in our world at large? Human beings become, if you haven't heard this word, parentified, like parentified children. In other words, in some kind of uh, childish state, acting like an adult or a parent. Presumably because at some point, a real parent wasn't on hand. But we could say that the whole of the human state, the human culture, is parentified. People walking around acting like they are at adult, saying important things, doing important things, and yet tragically childish, you know, tragically broken children but acting as if they were parents. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> doesn't feel good to have the leaders of the world in that kind of state. It's unnerving, brings out perhaps our scared inner child and, and makes us wonder what's going to happen now. I wanna share with you the first few lines of the 24th Psalm. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. The ultimate parent is on the scene, referred to here as the Lord. That's um, obviously an English translation of something, um, of a name for you that was given to universal being. Well, I don't care what name you give to universal being whether you call it God, the Lord, Elohim, Yehovah, or whatever. It doesn't really matter, does it? But the earth and everything in it has an ultimate parent, which is being itself. There is being that is present. There's being present for the earth. The earth is an expression of being. The earth is alive. It is a being living, being itself. The idea that we are multiple personalities inside ourselves is intriguing, somewhat baffling at times, and maybe even overwhelming. If you look at us as humankind, it's apparently the way it is, right? There are all kinds of personalities running around, and you well, you might call them aberrant in some cases, or deviant, or just sick, or corrupted. In some cases, like cute and wonderful, or whatever. All these sub-personalities running over, around. Whether we think of it as the world, in the world at large, or whether we think of it relative to our own lives together, what is that all about? We say there's oneness, but how do all the parts of this oneness work together? What is the structure of our togetherness? Is there a structure to our togetherness? There's a structure to our divisiveness, right? 
whether it's political parties, opinions, philosophies, cliques. There's a structure to our dividedness. What's the structure to our togetherness? Do we know that? And where does it come from? Well, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It comes out of universal being. Within being, there is the structure of reality. I didn't come in here as a blob this morning, and neither did you. We have structure individually and together. There's, there's a design to how we're made. How do we come to know that structure in its reality? We know well enough the, the, the structure of our divisiveness. How about flushing that, that down the toilet so that we co can come to know the structure of our togetherness, which it isn't, isn't becoming some blob. We are made a certain way. We have an, an intrinsic design to who we are as an individual and how we're individually made. And as the Lord of this universe here, I call upon all the parts of me to play their awakened roles in my functionality and service in the world. Right? Come on, people, get together here. We got something to do. And the same is true of us collectively. Let us hear the voice of universal being, the, feel the vibration of it, and feel the ordering power of it, which tells us the structure of our togetherness. Brothers and sisters, one family established in the divine not just in patterns of human divisiveness. But there's something central to that pattern. In this book that I'm reading, the man makes the brilliant point that the central facet that brings it all together is the self. And he said, uses that word in an unlimited way, not just the human personality self, but it is the self that is the integrating factor for all the parts of who we are. That's true of us as an individual. So we have to show up as, as the wonderful one within and say, I'm here. But at the same time, we as humankind or we as the universal priesthood, if we're to know our together togetherness and the structure of it, we have to hear the voice of selfhood that, that is universal being for the world and for us. We ha have to hear the voice of that, the resonance of it, and be wise enough to discern what is being told to us about how we fit together, how we create together, how we become a unified diversity, knowing oneness.